I'm at 94 on ult. Tristan, it's coming in. Yes, thank you, thank you. Oh, I'm sorry, Ishii. I didn't know I was not on you. Good job! Yeah! yeah. Hey guys, it's Compton EMT and welcome back to Silver Old Fart, the place where I give you a low level player's viewpoint of the game. Last time I had just come out of my placements, but here I am a week later and I am sad to say I have actually dropped SR. My current SR resides at... Uh, but what, what was it? 1743? Yeah, I think that's where I am. So I had a really bad night the other night. Ended up going 1 in 5 in ranked. And that dropped me from my, uh, my 1829 I was at down to that 1734. And after that, I actually had an okay night. You know, I, I went 4 and 4. I went 500. And I actually went up to... Uh, to 1743 so I did gain even though I went five and five and that comes from the performance factor of your actual competitive play all right, so moving into the big community topic of the week, the thing that people have been talking about the most and it is one tricks so it's been a problem for a while people have hated one tricks but very recently this week people started getting banned for poor teamwork so the big one to talk about was Fui. he's a Torbjorn main he's apparently a really nice guy and during his stream he actually ended up getting banned for a 24 hour ban for poor teamwork so there was a couple of blizzard responses you know i'm not going to throw them up on the screen there's a million videos out there saying oh blizzard responded to the fooey thing but essentially what they said was hey we're not banning you because you're just a one trick but because you weren't playing as a good teammate and there's a lot of kind of you know diverging things on that and we'll get into that in a second but one of the big things that people were very upset about is they're saying oh it's only going to be off meta characters that are going to be banned. The people who one trick off meta characters. And that's kind of what I want to talk about first. The main reason that the people from this are going to get banned and it's only going to be the off meta her heroes is because it's more noticeable. You don't see those characters all the time. It's just it's Torbjorn. It doesn't work every time. It's Symmetra. It doesn't work every time. Farah gets countered. If you only play Farah and they literally have three hit scans, and they're taking you out of the air every single time and you're not swapping. That is an issue. But one thing to also note too is everybody gets mad at popular one tricks too. Meta character one tricks. I'm going to go with the example of Mercy Mains. So you know for the past several months i mean probably since season five or four people have been complaining about high ranking high sr mercy mains because you'd get three in the game and they wouldn't know how to play anything else because they're mercy one tricks and let me correct myself i was saying mains mains and one tricks are completely different things i'm a zenyatta main but I also play Winston and Soldier and Orissa and Mercy. I play a lot of different things, I, but I'm a Zenyatta main. Whereas a one trick is literally just going to pick that one character every single time as quickly as possible and just stay on them. So back to what I was saying, everybody hated the Mercy one tricks because you get three of them on your team in high rank and you essentially just lost that game because they couldn't play anything else, anything of worth after mercy so there is a problem too and people were probably getting banned for foul language bad teamwork other reasons but it was mainly coming down to the fact that they are a one trick and they couldn't play anything else in that sr range so with the two sides of it you have one side that is very pro one trick play what you want you went ahead and paid money for the game you shouldn't be told how you need to play it and 
those people are right to an extent. I, I can get on board with that. You paid money for a game. You can play it how you want. And then there's the uh, the other side of the coin that says, if it's in competitive, no, you have to work as a team. And if you don't work as a team, we're going to report you. You're going to get banned if you don't switch off that Torbjorn or that Symmetra or Ana at this point because she's out of meta healers. Um, and you know that they're right too. In competitive, you do need to work as a team. You need to swap if you're countered, things like that. It's just part of that. And actually, when you go and look at the rules for competitive, it does say that. My standpoint, though, I'm sure you know. What is the silver player's standpoint on this? Why does it even matter? My standpoint on it is, why can't everybody just work together? And get things done I understand you know you want to play the way you want to play but the simple fact is yeah you spent $60 on this game the other five people on your team spent $60 on this game and they want to play in a mode like competitive where they will win if you want to do this one trick thing there's plenty of game modes for you to do it in there's no limits there's Deathmatch, there's team deathmatch, you know, there's I guess not lockout because you know, use him and he's he's done. There's quick play. I mean there's lots of ways to play. In fact, if you want to play Torbjorn or Symmetra or something like that, I would love to just see a games up there, you know, one trick Torb in the game browser. That would be great. But the simple fact is we all have to play along. We all paid money for this game. We all need to be able to play it the way we want to play it. Whether that be you're a one trick wanting to play Torbjorn, or you're someone who wants to have a good team comp. There needs to be compromise there. So that's that's basically my standpoint. So the last thing I'm gonna to touch in this kind of area is something that I said in the last episode. And that has to do with grouping up. What is the best way to ensure that you don't have a Torb one trick, you don't have a lever, you don't have a toxic player, you don't have any of that, you don't have three of the same one trick on your team, things like that. What's the easiest way? Group up. Group up with a solid group of players that you know will fill the roles that you want to play, or let's say you are Fooey, you are that Torbjorn main. Group up with players that aren't going to report you and they're actually going to play around your Torb. That would be amazing. You would you would suddenly win more games because teams are willing to work with you. Things like that. So grouping up still is kind of a huge idea for me for, you know, kind of limiting the toxicity and the issues with the ranked queue right now. Granted, I know a lot of people from reading other YouTubers' comments that... A lot of people really don't want that because uh, I want a solo queue and I don't want to go against a six stack, blah, blah, blah. Dude, the game's meant to be a team game. If you're not grouping up, you're doing it wrong. So why the heck is it handicapped? But anyways, use grouping up to keep yourself away from those one tricks. Or if you are a one trick, get a team around you that will support you as that one trick. All right, moving on to the new patch that just went live as of Thursday. And it's it's got some interesting stuff in it. So first off, we have Ana, and she has been increased from 60 to 70 damage. I, I think I talked about this last week, but that is a very important figure. And I see a lot of the YouTubers just completely dismissing it is not going to be doing anything for Ana. But there are a few out there, a few other YouTubers that are talking about it, you know. It's going to be great for her, things like that. For me, when I used to play Ana, guess what? I used to want to kill things in three shots. It aggravated me to no end that it took me four shots to take a squishy down. That means I couldn't do anything versus Ferez when the rest of my team wants to play Junkrat, Reaper, Roadhog, you know, things that can't really take the fair out. I was sitting back there as Ana trying to shoot her down. By the time I, you know, get three shots off on her, 
she's already down on the ground and healing up or something like that. So in pro play with this 70 damage, I would not be surprised if you saw some teams when there is a pharmacy on the enemy team to pull out on a, one of the two DPS slots and actually run a triple support at that point. All right, so moving on to Mercy, we do have the res changes. A lot of people crying, oh, she's ruined, oh, she's ruined, blah, blah, blah. No, she's still going to be a must pick. That that res is just way, way too good. So with the Resurrect, when you're not in your ultimate, mind you, not in your ultimate, the cast time is increased from 0 seconds to 1.75 seconds. So it takes you just under 2 seconds to actually res someone now. That will, you know, keep you in one place for longer. It means you can't just swoop in, res, swoop out. You know, I used to do that all the time. You know, like Temple of Anubis first point. I'd be on the top of one side of the point, fly down to the point, res somebody, look up, fly back up to the person on the other high ground and that was it you can't do that anymore which is a good thing because that was extremely just overpowered also when you are rezzing and when you're in that 1.75 seconds you're going to get 75 percent of your speed reduced so you're only going to move at 25 percent of the normal speed you can still move it's very very slow it's slower than like orissa firing in moving at the same time that's it's like half of that speed so it, it's 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 pretty low the last thing with that resurrect is it can be interrupted now i haven't tested this on the server but if she gets interrupted and the cooldown doesn't go off it doesn't waste it kind of like doomfist stopping his his fist punch or something like that i will be very upset because that needs to happen if you pull off the play to stun the mercy it needs to use her ability and put it on cooldown just like every other ability in the game that has wind up time like that that's that's just if it's not like that i like i said i haven't tested it but it needs to be that way all right so her valkyrie form is actually the only place where you can res like you used to res so if you're in valkyrie you swoop down instant res instant res swoop out and that just makes her ult even that much more valuable. So you don't want to be wasting that ult. You know, I've had several times where I've done my Valkyrie and then all I hear is like, it's high new. Or, you know, a visor activating. It's just, <laughs> it's just like, well, that was a waste. <laughs> Anyways, let's move on to the new support character, Moira. You know, there's a lot of hype around her. People are saying she's going to replace Mercy, things like that. And she's not. Mer Mercy's still going to be a one pick with that res in 95% of the situations. The thing with Moira is she has to find some type of utility somewhere to beat out Zen and beat out Lucio. You see Lucio a lot on King of the Hill with Mercy because the speed boost and the booping and all of the environmental kills on a lot of those uh, King of the Hill maps. And then you see, you know, Zenyatta basically everywhere else because he's really great at, you know, focusing down characters, which in organized teams happens. So that Discord Orb is so powerful. And the funniest part is, he is probably the easiest character to dive in the game, but he was still part of Dive Comp in the Dive Comp meta. That shows you the actual power that is Zenyatta. So, yeah, it is what it is. I think some people will find some utility for her. I don't think she'll replace Mercy, but her kit is really, really cool. And heck, you might see some triple DP or some triple healer uh, setups roll out with, say, Mercy, Zen, Moira, and it would just basically Zen running in a DPS slot. That's that's all that would be. All right, so the last character update is going to be Winston, my lovely gorilla that is my off main, and it's actually a very minor change, but at the same time a very very big change so the change is his barrier 
both Orissa and Reinhardt have a little meter on their screen when their barrier's out, showing you how much health it has. Winston didn't have that, and now he does. And that is going to feel so great. Because I'm counting in my head the time that it's going to be up, but I can't really tell unless I'm looking directly at it how badly it's hurt. But now I'll be able to actually see numbers. And if you've never really played Winston a lot doing the, the shield ducking, the shield dance, you're not really looking at your shield a lot. You're just kind of looking at the edge and making sure you're getting in and out and things like that. So that meter is going to help a ton. So yeah, guys, next week with the holiday and everything here in the United States Thanksgiving, I want to let you guys know some of the changes that are going on just for next week. So this show, the old fart kind of vlog, is probably going to be in a more normal vlog style. I'm going to be busy. I'm not going to be able to sit down at my computer. I'll probably just record it with my phone and go ahead and upload it without any real editing. I might drop it over, edit it real quick, throw an intro, throw an outro, and be done but uh and, uh, that's basically what i'll do anyways next week too no stream on thursday it is thanksgiving and yeah i'm not gonna stream on the holiday i got a family i got family stuff to do so sorry guys no thursday stream next week all right, guys, that's it for the Silver Old Fart. Make sure to uh, check out the gameplay channel if you want to see the actual games that I've been playing and see how I've fared in those. I do set them up with a win, a loss, or a tie at the very beginning. Give you who I played, the map I played on, and the range I played in, and then the date. So you can very easily kind of find things you might want to watch. So that, will, that subscribe button will be coming up on the end of the video here. Um, remember guys, I am a Twitch affiliate now. So if you have a, if you have Prime, jump over on Twitch. You get a free sub every month. I would love to have your sub. I'm, I'm getting everything kind of worked together, getting some emotes, things like that, getting everything together so you guys have some cool stuff for when you actually do subscribe. All right, guys, so that's it for this episode. Make sure to subscribe and click that bell so you get notifications of any of the videos I send out. Up on the screen now is going to be a, another video that you might like as well as last week's episode. Anyways, guys, have a good week. Peace.